Now then, right, back in the garage working on the insignia. Uh, in the last video I talked about changing the exhaust for like the fourth, fifth time. So I have made a start, so I'm going to show you what I've done with the exhaust and then I'll tell you my plan and hopefully get some work done today. I've only got a couple of hours in the garage. Um, so yeah, last week I took the car apart again and I took the DPF off. Um, got the DPF, so I'll put some footage of that in the corner of the screen. Took it off, gutted it, so cut a hole in it, chiselled out all the internals, uh, wore a, a mask, and the, I imagine the dust is very hazardous. Um, so, got the exhaust, got the cat, that's uh, the DPF, left the cat in, got the DPF, T welded it back up, um, and then on the bottom, I've gone from what was one and a half inch to a three inch pipe. So, I'll show you that now. Okay, so DPF up in there, and then this is this. So it's now going to a three inch stainless pipe V band on it. Um, so the idea being less restrictive. And then now I've got to develop, not develop, a fabricate an exhaust system going all the way to the back. It's not going quite to the back, it's going to go to the passenger side rear tyre and it's hopefully going to stick out under the sill that's the plan so you can see all the soot there that's because I've been driving around with the car with an exhaust like that um, so not ideal fumes coming into the cabin all that stuff so not ideal um, but yeah that's the plan is to try and fabricate a bit more of the exhaust um, just to explain oh. Um, the reason that I'm going to gut, the reason I have gutted the DPF, uh, a couple of reasons. So number one being um, the regen and contaminating the oil. So this car's got, a, or most cars now, it tells you when it needs a service basically. On the dashboard it comes up one in like you know, 10,000 miles, whatever, service. So I waited until it told me to and then I changed the oil. I took the oil out, it was like, it just stunk a diesel. Just absolutely stunk and you could tell it was heavily contaminated. And that is the the regen. So it's injecting extra fuel to heat up the exhaust. And that fuel is getting down past piston rings into your sump. Um, and that's why if your car's got an oil leak, sometimes you don't know it's going to, you, you never need to top it back up again. Uh, because you've got a sump full of fuel. So it, it never actually runs out of oil because it's topping it up. Back in a minute. Right, back. So, reasons to delete the DPF. So, the first one was oil contamination with fuel. Uh, not good. The other one was uh, the heat. So, I've done a lot of date logging. <sighs> the DPF, the exhaust gets up to like 600 degrees during regen, which is very, very hot. Normally, it's like now. With no DPF, going for a quick drive, it gets up to about 300 degrees and then it cools down quite quick after that. So yeah, the heat. The other reason was sort of performance. So with my car, as the DPF got full, you kind of noticed it getting a bit sluggish. It never, not slow, but definitely sluggish. And then it did a regen. And then after regen, it went like a rocket ship. Talking about a slow diesel, but it went quicker. Um, so yeah that were annoying and then ultimately the goal is 3 inch straight through exhaust uh, bigger intercooler remap and then if I'm still keen on modifying it and don't want to don't want to stop then the next thing there is a bigger turbo and then it's MAF sensor injectors fuel pump but I don't think I'm I think I've had like 230 horsepower and uh, shitloads of pounds for you to talk I think I'd be quite happy with that and then I don't want to you know, there's the dual mass flywheel out there fortune to replace there's the clutch I don't want to destroy the gearbox and the clutch and flywheel um, and plus I'm just having a bit of fun with it I want to do some alley welding 
do some off stern as well then. So that's the plan. So I'll crack on now. I've got I need to mark this, give it a little cut. No 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 sorry. Clean it. Uh mark it with marker pen. This needs just sort of I'll just deburr it. I'm gonna weld that. Weld that onto there, just tack it on, and then I've got to think about the next pipe after that. So I'll do that now. Okay then, so time to pack up. I'll just show you what I've done. I've not been able to fully seam weld it, but I've made some good progress. So if we go... Okay. I probably didn't say earlier that I've had to MIG weld this stainless onto the DPF. Uh, just because it was a massive gap and it was just easier just to, to MIG it. It's not quite... It's a bit ugly, but it's covered by a heat shield. So, flexor section there, and then we've got a bend, a straight, and then a bend. Then it goes down to the hanger. Slide under this car. Um, so I've just drawn a little line there. So I'm gonna cut it there, and then it's gonna be a, a straight pipe, a straight piece going five inches and then it's going to be a v-band and then i want to reuse these mounts so i don't quite know how i'm going to do it but i'm going to get some some bar or tube or bolts and um, weld something onto there I'll, I'll think about that and show you in the near future um i've got a spacer under there uh, just to sort of simulate the position so I've got some up movement and then I've got some down movement once that space is gone and the mounts are on so it's pretty tight under here where my finger is uh, so I'm worried that as the engine moves that might rub I've only got maybe 10 mil gap on the top there so it might be that if that rubs I'll actually notch out the tube put a cut out a square and then weld in a, a piece so that there's a notch in it so it doesn't rub. I don't want this exhaust to rub anywhere on the bottom of the car. But anyway that's it for now. So all these joints need fully welded. But so far so good and I think it looks pretty good with you. Three inch exhaust underneath. But uh, yeah thanks for watching. I'll knock this video on the head there. And uh, see you in the next one.